gives me great pride and pleasure to introduce Anusha Rahma, who serves as Minister of State for Information Technology and Telecommunication in Pakistan. She has been a member of the National Assembly of Pakistan since 2008. As a corporate lawyer by profession, she worked in the telecom sector from the 1990s. She was awarded the coveted GEM Tech Global Achievers Award in 2015 for her, for her efforts to empower women through technology. Anusha was also one of the ministers who drafted flagship legislation to protect women from online abuse and harassment and to penalize offenders. Ladies and gentlemen, she has flown nearly 4,000 miles to be here and we are most honoured that she has made time in her busy schedule to move forward the goals of this conference. Please welcome Anusha Rahman. Honourable members of the European Parliament, Mr. Amjad Bashir, Mr. Yang Zadel, Mr. Shahid Azim, Ambassador of Pakistan, Sayyid Abne Abbas, Secretary of Commerce, Mr. Azmat Ranja, ladies and gentlemen, the business leaders, the sponsors of, the of this conference, a very good afternoon. I'm very pleased to be here this afternoon, actually. Last week, I was in Barcelona. And this week, I'm here in Chelsea. So it's certainly there is more than just football that is bringing these two cities together. And that certainly is the digital revolution that Pakistan is actually literally buzzing with. So it's a matter of immense honor for me uh, to address this August gathering here today. You are all the technology leaders, you are political leaders, your professionals, your business executives, all the prominent intellectuals, and all those who care about Pakistan. I think that's what I have sensed here the most, that there is certainly a sense of ownership for Pakistan and whatever is happening there. So thank you very much for being here. It's your presence today here is all about hope, promise, and possibilities. And it brings us together who believe that there is immense possibility, synergy, and potential of trade and commerce between UK and EU. As Mr. Young just said, that we can work as a trilateral. And I can, and my standing here today ensures to you that I, I, what I would very much want to be part of that trilateral. Dig digitization, what is happening in Pakistan and what it is doing to the people of my country is something I would like to share with you today from a very short presentation. Pakistan's demographic landscape, landscape it shows to you here today that we are a population of 193 million and over 120 million youth. The top line percentage is that over 60% of the young population is under the age of 30. And we produce something like 20,000 ICT graduates every year. We have about 49% female population and the GDP growth rate has done very well. In the last two years, we have grown immensely now expected to be over 5.5%. We did the telecom sector policy in 2015. 
And this policy is a commitment of the government of Pakistan to enhance the ICTs. We have an annual turnaround of 4.5 billion USD. The subscribers are about 137 million. So when you mention the Czech Republic population to behalf of Karachi, we are about 200 million actually. But after the census this year, we would know the real population. And of which, uh, the, about, the gel density is about 72%. And as we speak, we add about 1, 1 1.2 million subscribers on the broadband every month. And this has been the trend ever since we did the Spectrum auction. So this is the fastest growth rate of broadband internet. Uh, when I became the minister, when the Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif gave me the responsibility to look after this industry, we were less than 3% in broadband penetration. Today, we are 23% roughly overall, and 27% of those who are connected are on broadband. We are the third largest English-speaking country and fourth largest in freelancing. We are just behind US, Ukraine, and India in freelancing. IT industry size is over $3.5 billion, and our estimates from the Bearing Point study is that this figure is also not the exact projection that Pakistan holds. The telecom policy framework, it's a new uh, telecom integrated policy framework. It is, speaks about spectrum, it speaks about uh, spectrum sharing, spectrum trading, over the top services, voice over IP. It is uh, looking at special provisions for local manufacturing, Wi-Fi hotspots, smartphone manufacturing, and telecom equipment manufacturing. The telecom policy, uh, just last week, won an award at the GSMA and Pakistan was recognized as government leader uh, of, the, of the world in terms of the telecom policy, alhamdulillah. So considering the digital divide, I mean, we released the spectrum from the next generation mobile services in 2014. And we launched both the 3G and 4G spectrum together. Since then, we have done two spectrum auctions, and the third one is on the way in, in May 2017. So what we wanted to do was set a trend. We wanted to show to the world that spectrum auction is a routine thing, and the operators can have the confidence that whenever they need the spectrum, they will have the spectrum. Because the broadband proliferation is not going to come without this, this resource made available to them on a regular basis. Infrastructure Broadband for Sustainable Development. This is the prime time project of the Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif's government. Considering the digital divide between rural and urban areas, government through a public-private mo uh, partnership model, we devised the USF fund and we started deploying projects which resulted in an extensive deployment of fiber optic and provisioning of broadband services. So as you can see, that all the green parts are the ones which are connected. All the purple parts are there. We are already implementing the 3G services. And all the uh, yellow parts are the ones which I'm going to start the work now, starting June. So the plan of the government of Pakistan is that by 2018 December, every village which has 100 population and does not have a connectivity will be connected through 3G. So this is a huge commitment, 200 million population, a village of 100 having no connectivity, which means they don't have even fixed line, will have a 3G connection. I've already signed all the projects. It's a public-private partnership mechanism. It's a commitment about $50 million. And this commitment is coming from the USF funding. And if you look at it, if you look at all the areas other than Fata area, the rest of the Pakistan will be connected. So we want to connect the unconnected, a ubiquitous development platform. Everybody should be able to make use of technology as it becomes available. That's the vision of the Prime Minister of Pakistan. So ladies and gentlemen, in line with the global SDGs, our focus is very clear. Digital inclusion of women and girls through ICT is part of our vision. We want to provide women 
with all opportunities to develop their skills, to use ICT to enable them, to, to use it for their socioeconomic development, and to, to make them uh, self-sufficient when it comes to earning a bread sitting from homes. So as part of that program, <laughs> Uh, we are moving ahead with our project of ICT for Girls. But before that, I just want to show you the software development park that we are making in Islamabad. This is the largest uh, information technology park, and I'm going to sign on the 21st of March the loan agreement with Korean Exim. This is on 45 acres. It's a collaborate, uh, collaborative uh, project. It's an outlay of uh, $90 million. It's, we are going to house about 100 big IT companies, over 5,000 IT professionals, data centers, incubation centers, business centers, multipurpose halls. It also has a daycare center, which they have forgot to write here, because this is something I've added there. So on similar patterns, we are making uh, two more IT parks, one in Lahore and one in Karachi. And the, on the 21st of March, we are signing the loan agreement with Korean Exim. On, we feel, and I think I strongly believe, that the human resource capital is the foundation for whatever we want to deliver. And Pakistan, with a population of 200 million, with 60% below the age of 30, needs to be harnessed and need to be ripened their potential. So innovation and talent of the youth is our biggest asset. And we hope that for our nation, we can use ICT to give them these opportunities. With global freelancing statistics acknowledging this potential, we have placed a policy focus on nurturing innovation and entrepreneurship of our youth. From the ICT R&D Fund, we are now announcing a program to train one million youngsters on freelancing. So at the moment, we have around 200,000 freelancers, which are contributing around $1.25 billion every year. So with this, a million uh, freelancers being trained again, I expect that this will become the cornerstone of your interest. Because these youngsters include girls and boys from all segments of society. So with, uh, so now, that we are focused on developing our youth. There is a Prime Minister National ICT Scholarship Program. Uh, we are giving fully funded scholarships to students from the underserved, unserved areas, particularly from Balochistan, and the National ICT Internship Program. That I just mentioned that we are going to place 3,000 ICT graduates in ICT companies, and I've reserved a quota for girls for like 30%. This again is another program which is championed by uh, Ministry of IT and is patronized by the finance minister, is the ICT for girls. We believe that girls of our country, which forms around 49% of the population, we need to give them the tools for their socioeconomic development. And this program is actually a Microsoft powered 4Cs coding uh, centric training program. We have launched it in 150 women empowerment centers of Beitul Mal, which is a center for the poorest girls coming from the most disadvantaged segments. These girls are being trained and at the moment, as we speak, 50 women empowerment centers are fully functional and uh, the MP of the area of Tobat Singh was complaining to me that, Madam, you have opened one lab, there are only 20 computers, and you are training 20 girls at a time, and the queue is of 500 girls. Now what do we do? So you help us out. So now we are uh, working on augmenting what we have already given, but look at the demand. And I don't have the video here uh, to show you, but I have it on my WhatsApp, that you hear these girls. And these girls are saying that we are going to use ICT to earn a living, to, to work, and to teach our younger brothers and sisters. That's the glow in their eyes. And you know what? They used to come to these women empowerment centers to learn basic skills like how to do cooking, how to do, do stitching, how to do painting. Suddenly, there is a tech savvy environment, a beautiful computer lab, 
equipped with latest technology and Microsoft trainers teaching them how to do coding. So these are my girls in ICT learning the four coding ICT skills. And I'm scaling this program now, and I was actually going to sign the ceremony today on the Women's Day, but uh, Mr. Ramjil invited me, so I will defer it to next week. So I'm now scaling this program to 107 girls' schools in rural Islamabad, and these public sector schools have a population of 60,000. And I believe that the girls need to be taught from a very young age. So I'm tapping the four-year-old onwards till 15. So in next 10 years, this girls' population is going to be championing the ICT agenda. So this project is, uh, then I'm, I intend to take it up to uh, the uh, urban area schools. And Secretary Commerce is sitting here, and he used to be Secretary IT. And he used to tell me all the time, Minister, now as the time is moving by, it seems there will be no ministry left except for the IT ministry. Because whether it's education, whether it's health, whether it's commerce, everything is enabled by IT. And I think as we are moving, I can see our ingress in the Commerce Ministry for e-commerce, in the Education Ministry for e-commerce, but he doesn't approve it very much. He says they should also do, it, they, they, do their job. But what I um, constantly argue with him is that we have to make some examples. We should guide people how it can be done. And then the provinces should, as the subjects are devolved, to, to champion it themselves. So for me, making Islamabad area as a, a let's say, a prototype or a model is very important so that other provinces can take guidance from here. Another thing that I feel is very important and the Prime Minister is very uh, uh, conscious of and encourages us to do is to evolve entrepreneurship. For 200 million people, creating jobs is not an easy task. Although it's something that the private sector uh, comes forward and helps out, entrepreneurship is a skill which ICT definitely provides an opportunity to youngsters. So what we are doing now in Islamabad and throughout Pakistan is setting up national incubation centers. The first one, as you can see, was inaugurated by Mr. Holen Zhao, the Secretary General ITU. He's somebody who champions SMEs. And we feel that innovation of our ta talent of our youth can be uh, given an opportunity by incubation. So this startup opportunity is uh, running in Islamabad now. This, this is again a model of public partnership. Uh, Vimplecom has partners with us, which is uh, Mobilink or Jazz in Pakistan. And we are incubating 40, incub uh, 40 companies here. We are scaling it up to the four provinces in, Isla in Lahore, Karachi, Peshawar, and Quetta. And we expect that once these programs are running, we can have good products uh, ready for acceleration. And I would like to share with you, I had taken about five companies to 4x4 four four in, in Barcelona. And there, were, there was a congregation of six, 700 companies. If Ericsson is sitting here, you must, have, uh, you must have visited that place, but six, 700 companies were there. And the boys that we have taken from Pakistan for the first time from this incubation center, the boy who talked was a Pakistani company. So his product, his product is about, a, what the product he has made is, he's archiving all the old buildings. He's archiving every single detail in 3D. So his project, and when I went to the 4 by 4 end to visit these youngsters, Wall Street General was interviewing him. So he's in his mid-twenties. He was literally Mr. Nobody till this project, National Incubation, started. Nobody knew what he was doing. And suddenly, I thought I was meeting a hero. For me, my children are my heroes. And so when he was being interviewed by the Wall Street General, I thought, God knows how many children of this talent are around in my country who need to be given an opportunity. And it's the job of the government to give them the first opportunity. And what they make of that opportunity exactly is what I saw at the 4x4N. So we are going to be making um, 
four more incubation centers in the provincial capitals, and three specialized incubation centers, one in FinTech, robotics, and IoT. Actually, Mr. Jack Ma says it's not FinTech, it's, let's call it TechFin. So I think we need to re-articulate FinTech as TechFin because Alibaba wants it like that. And I think he's very right in saying so. So these specialized centers are being funded by the government of Pakistan. This is coming from the contributions of the telecom sector, and it's a public-private partnership. I have huge interest coming from, in response to the RFP. Um, I've heard that people have actually put in bids for three centers at a time. And about three, four, three to four hundred companies have put in the bids. So if any one of you who wants to work with us, these are the opportunities that we are creating in Pakistan. If you don't want to risk your own capital, government is providing the funding, and I want your skills, your experience, your uh, whatever solid contribution in terms of your experience to come in, and I would want to take my children um, uh, and train them in this manner. Another thing that uh, we, we, we are taking a lot of pride in is digitization in the public sector. This digitization is coming as part of the Prime Minister's vision of accelerated digitization. We are the first ministry in the SARC countries to provide the e-office suite. Uh, this is an online uh, process. We are still uh, in the process of its implementation, but once it is complete, it will be the first federal government which will have all its um, uh, less paper environment implemented. We have also done HIMS, we have done online recruitment treatment, and we are also uh, doing a citizen feedback system model. So as I said that Pakistan is ranked uh, amongst the top freelancers, and the primary objective is to build up the skills of the freelancers community, and I spoke about the one million that we are going to train, and um, we expect that the software exports are going to get a big boost with this one million uh, freelancers trained in our country. We've got a few international recognitions. Um, yeah, they, would, they wanted to put my pictures there, so anyway, I can forward it. But it was three uh, recognitions that we have had. One was the, uh, by GSMA on Spectrum for Mobile Broadband. It was an award given to us in 2015. My Secretary of Commerce, previously Secretary of IT, we jointly uh, owned this uh, award. This was on holding the transparent spectrum auction in the country. Then the GEMTECH Award was awarded by the UN. And then um, GSMA Government Leadership Award is the one I was there in Barcelona last week. Um, I, did, I couldn't see the football match, just the way I couldn't see the match today at Chelsea, if there is one. But it doesn't matter. I think technology is what is bumping. So in this landscape, um, what is Pakistan offering? Pakistan is offering an infrastructure, e-highway. Pakistan is offering a human resource capital filled country. Pakistan is offering a 100% repatriation environment where your investment can be repatriated without any issues. What Pakistan is offering, a human resource intensive young population and an environment where ICTs is at the main policy agenda of the government of Pakistan. What Pakistan is offering is a commitment of the government to invest rapidly in the fast-moving digital world. And the investment is coming from the government itself. What Pakistan is offering is a public-private partnership model. I don't think that the government can do everything alone. I believe that we all have to work together. There is a win-win for everyone. I don't think that I would want to say that, no, you do it in my country because it's in my interest. I want to say and I believe that you do it in Pakistan because it's in the interest of all those who are investing there. And I was speaking to Ericsson earlier and also in Barcelona I spoke to him on many platforms that Pakistan is no longer a consumer market. Pakistan is a market which provides ample opportunities for manufacturing. We have given a special package for telecom uh, manufacturing. IT is tax-free till 2019. And Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif is very pro providing opportunities to the investors and giving them a tax-free environment. So 
and then e-commerce. E-commerce is the next biggest focus of uh, the world when it comes to Pakistan. Mr. Jack Ma of Alibaba made Prime Minister at the World Economic Forum and his team was visiting us last week. And what they see is a potential going up to anywhere between five to six billion dollars just from e-commerce. And we are now working under the uh, chairmanship of the finance minister through a policy committee doing, uh, taking a few steps to ensure that the e-commerce can be successfully implemented. We are enacting the laws. We are uh, obviously providing the ICT platforms. We are working on the regulatory uh, frameworks. We are also establishing a regulation for e-commerce through the state bank taxation issues, and we are looking at the consumer protection rights. So these are all the things which will be settled by the end of the year. So e-commerce, app development, and all such businesses have a huge potential to, uh, to be in Pakistan. So ladies and gentlemen, in this backdrop of this serious digital market growth measures, stability of economy, and bargaining of tech talent of the Pakistan youth, and the persistent policy focus of a democratic government. The mix is just about complete for the technology businesses and enterprises to consider broad spectrum investment in the ICT market and business in Pakistan. I would like to invite all of you in your own domains to consider investments in partnership with Pakistani ICT businesses to tap the immense opportunities in Pakistan that Pakistan presents today. My ministry and my government would like to promise all facilitative measures to boost and grow the foreign investment that come into our market. My contact details are available on the website and I'm pretty much easily available for any contacts if required. We expect business to business contacts that will flow from fora like today's, which will transform the individual strength of our ICT markets into our combined strengths. That is how I look at us working together, starting from this platform. In the end, I would like to reiterate that we are fully committed to the proliferation of digitization in Pakistan, as well as to the market opportunity this digitization represents. We look forward to capitalizing the opportunity and we look forward to uh, capitalizing the potential of humans and technology for thriving a vibrant Pakistan. I very much appreciate the initiative that uh, the MEPs from UK and Mr. Shahid and everybody who, has uh, who have come forward looking at Pakistan as a digital powerhouse. I very much appreciate that whatever work we are doing is being recognized and we are looked at as a country who can be part of the trilateral arrangement that Ms. Ms. MEP just spoke. And this is the resolve and the visionary guidance of Honorable Prime Minister of Pakistan, Mr. Mohammad Nawaz Sharif, and that we shall make Pakistan into a digital Pakistan. I would like to thank the organizers once again uh, of this conference for inviting me uh, and, my, and the delegates uh, to, from Pakistan. I welcome all the attendees of the Digital Trade Conference on behalf of the government Pakistan to come forward with whatever queries they have to me. I hope that this uh, conference will be precursor to a sustained discourse and bilateral exchanges of IT delegations in future to enhance trade and investment between the ICT sectors of our country. I thank you very much, honorable gentlemen. And ladies.